This is KGW News at Noon. And we begin with breaking news. A massive earthquake rocked Alaska this morning. Take a look at this video from Twitter. It shows a damaged street near the Anchorage airport with a person and their car stuck in the rubble. The quake hit around 10 o'clock this morning. The USGS says it was a magnitude 7.0. There have been several aftershocks, some as strong as 5.8. The National Tsunami Warning Center issued a tsunami warning for coastal zones of southern Alaska. That warning has now been canceled. People also shared videos like this from inside a grocery store shortly after the quake. Just look at all the items knocked to the floor, entire shelves even tipped over. Of course, this is a developing situation. We'll update you on air and online as we learn anything new. A three car crash involving a Washington state trooper may be the result of road rage. Washington State Patrol says the trooper was in the middle of a traffic stop along I-205 when his car was hit. A witness told detectives one of the vehicles was passing on the right shoulder of the highway. Washington State Patrol says one driver was taken to the hospital. The trooper is okay, but he is dealing with some neck pain. Drivers should expect delays in this area. Well, right now, the Portland Timbers are preparing for a trip to Atlanta. They'll play in the MLS Cup after winning the Western Conference Championship last night. KGW's Tim Gordon is live at Providence Park. Tim, the Timbers' victory log is also heading south. What an exciting time to be a soccer fan. <laughs> Isn't it though, Brenda, for sure? Yeah, there's the Timbers victory log and we got to ask Timber Joey, how many slices off that log in Atlanta do you think? Oh man, I don't like making predictions, but uh, when that smell of the smoke comes, it'll be great. <laughs> At least a few we hope and a win, whatever it is, right? I would like that. You know, my favorite one's that one for, for Jeff Atanella when we get a shutout, so Absolutely. we'll see. All right, well, there it is, and there's the log, and take a look at that thing. Isn't it beautiful? Well, let's talk about the Western Conference Championship now. Played last night in Kansas City, and we start early in the second half because that's when the Timbers turned it on. Weaving around Roger Espinosa, Blanco fences it! Oh, I say! What a stunning strike from Sebastian Blanco! Sebastian Blanco with a highlight of the night and the Timbers' first goal in the 52nd minute. Then it was Diego Valeri time. A header into the net gave the Timbers the lead over Sporting KC. The crowd here at home loving it. Kells Irish Pub, a very happy place. Pretty freaking happy. Very happy. All the way. All the way. Kansas City tied it back up and it was a nail biter from there. But the Road Warrior Timbers would not settle. Diego Valeri could finish it here. He's through. Valeri for Poland has scored. It was Valeri again turning on the star power. A winning goal in stoppage time. And the Portland Timbers win the Western Conference Championship 3-2. Such a big victory. Some of the Timbers' army showed up at PDX to welcome the team home at 2.45 in the morning. It's super awesome to, to be able to actually be here, meet these guys coming back from Kansas City and get to be actually holding the, the Western Cup. They're just amazing and they bring a lot of joy to a lot of people. So, <laughs> And the love is returned. I mean, they are they are special. They are special. They uh, always show us uh, how much they love us and how much they love the club. And now on to Atlanta on a roll. There's a belief in the group that uh, we can accomplish amazing things. Uh, you know, doing it together. And uh, I'm just as a coach, I'm extremely proud of the guys. Yeah, good reason to be proud from Coach Gio there. All right, the log's got time to get to Atlanta. The big MLS final is December 8th. And check in StubHub, tickets are already 215 and up. It's going to cost you something. It's going to be a lot of fun. This log is taken off at 1230, Brenda, on this beautiful Western Star truck from Daimler, North America. Back to you. That is fantastic. Thank you so much, Tim. Also today, the Oregon Zoo is sharing some sad news. Its youngest elephant, Lily, died just one day before her sixth birthday. KGW's Art Edwards is joining us now from the zoo with the very latest art. 
Uh, you know, the uh, Oregon Zoo is closed today because of the death of Lily, the youngest elephant that the Oregon Zoo had here. This is really a very difficult day for everyone here at the Oregon Zoo. Now, today would have been Lily's sixth birthday. She died of a sudden onset of a virus known as EEHV. Elephant calves are often susceptible to becoming sick from that virus. Now, the zoo said that a blood test revealed the virus was active. That was on Wednesday, and they immediately began treatment. The virus is present in almost all Asian elephants. For the staff here at the zoo, Lily's death is devastating. These elephants are family. You know, we're here seven days a week, 365 days a year, to make sure they have the best life possible. And that's what we work to do. And, you know, there are a lot of days you go home and you say, I could have done a little more. I could have done something more. And that's what keeps you driven. Now, the virus also affects wild elephants. Experts say they don't know why some elephants do get sick from this virus. There is no vaccine against EEHV right now. Zoo administrators said that they made the decision to close the zoo today uh, because everyone really was very shaken by what happened, and they wanted to be able to have uh, people here, the staff and, and other people here at the zoo, be able to uh, process this and, and begin to grieve for Lily as well. Back to you. Yeah, that's understandable. Art, thank you. Mount Hood Meadows opened its season this morning. Right now, it has almost two feet of snow on the ground. It's still early, though, and the snow is relatively shallow. So Meadows is warning skiers and snowboarders to stick to those groomed runs. We want to check in with meteorologist Chris McGinnis this afternoon. So, Chris, you're saying that more snow is on the way. Oh, like maybe double. You mentioned uh, nearly ab ab about 20 inches or so the base at Meadows right now. And it's possible if things set up just right that we could double that by the end of the weekend. That would be on the high end, but still a great opening weekend here for ski season across the northwest. We've got some snow showers up in the mountains today, but they will really be picking up later this afternoon and tonight. A winter weather advisory is in effect for the high cascades. Get a look at Futurecast here. Uh, with the snow level lowering to between 2,500 and 3,000 feet this evening, we've got some nice bullseyes over Mount Hood and Mount Bachelor, and on the order of about 10 to 20 inches of snow, expected around 5,000 feet. So right around the ski resorts, we're going to get a nice dumping of fresh powder tonight. This is a live look from uh, just the east of government camp near Frog Lake on Highway 26. Again, up at pass level, they are seeing some intermittent snow showers, but these will ratchet up as we go through the day. East of the mountain, as we go out towards the gorge, East Gorge, looking back towards Mount Hood, it is cloud cap. This is from our Oregon's veterans home in the Dalles. Camera looking back towards the cloud cap Mount Hood to the beach we go. It's cloudy at uh, Cannon Beach, and we've got broken cloud cover over downtown. Brenda, right now it's 51 degrees, so it actually managed to get a little warmer than we thought, but uh, there is rain and significant rain headed our way this afternoon. We'll walk you through the rest of the day and right on into the weekend coming up in just a few minutes. Cool shot behind you, though. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chris. A grand jury has indicted a former Dallas police officer on a manslaughter charge in the shooting death of her neighbor. Back in September, Amber Geiger says she went into Botham John's apartment, mistaking it for her own. She thought John was an intruder and she shot and killed him. Geiger was arrested on a manslaughter charge three days later and then fired from the Dallas police force. President Trump is in Buenos Aires today where he signed a new trade deal. But trouble is brewing back home. A man who was once one of his closest confidants is pleading guilty to lying to Congress. NBC's Tracy Potts has the latest. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The G20 summit begins with President Trump signing a new trade deal with Canada and Mexico, replacing NAFTA. This will help stop auto jobs from going overseas and it will bring back auto jobs that have already left. Canada's prime minister signed on while taking a swipe at U.S. steel tariffs. And Donald, it's all the more reason why we need to keep working to remove the tariffs on steel and aluminum between our countries. We're also watching to see if his meetings with world leaders will impact the trade war with China, tense relations with Saudi Arabia and Russia. President Trump says he will not meet with Russian leader Vladimir Putin in Buenos Aires this weekend. Citing the conflict over Ukraine, Mr. Trump suddenly canceled that meeting hours after his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, pleaded guilty to lying to Congress about the skyscraper they were planning to build in Moscow. Turns out they were still working on that during the campaign 
and didn't scrap the project until the day the public learned that Russia hacked Democrats' computers. Michael Cohn is lying. He tweets this morning that the Trump Tower deal was very legal and very cool, involving zero money and zero guarantees. Cohen has met seven times with the Russia special counsel team as late as last week. He already pleaded guilty to financial crimes and faces serious jail time. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. Today, Marriott says a breach of its database could impact as many as 500 million guests at its Starwood hotels. Marriott is the world's largest hotel chain. It says the unauthorized access has been happening since 2014 and credit card numbers and expiration dates may have been taken. Also exposed, mailing and email addresses and phone numbers. Marriott is notifying those who may be affected. It also set up a website and a call center for anyone who thinks they could be at risk. In the meantime, New York's Attorney General has opened an investigation. Well, it took months, but vendors that work two big country music festivals in Oregon are finally getting paid. They had a beef with IMG, the company behind the Country Crossings and Willamette Country Music Festivals. So here's the problem. When festival goers bought anything, IMG funneled the money through its credit card system. It didn't go directly to the vendors who supplied the goods. The owner of a restaurant in Southern Oregon told us he just found out he'll get reimbursed the full $8,000 he's owed, but he fears other businesses won't be so lucky. I'm not owed that much. It's not going to crush me, but I wanted to see these vendors that really were there. You know, they possibly were going to lose their business if they didn't get paid that money. So that was important to me. We reached out to lawyers for IMG, but we didn't hear back. Lynn County, by the way, revoked next year's permit for the Willamette Country Music Festival, and the Country Crossings Festival has been canceled.